Perhaps you recognize me. It's your favorite president. I got back a day ago from Walter Reed Medical Center. I went in, I wasn't feeling so hot. And within a very short period of time, they gave me Regeneron. A short 24 hours later, I was feeling great. And that's what I want for everybody. If you're in the hospital and you're feeling really bad, Regeneron. We have hundreds of thousands of doses that are just about ready. You're going to get better. You're going to get better really fast. Regeneron. Because I feel great. I feel like perfect. I want to get for you what I got. Regeneron. And you'll see some amazing things happen. You're going to get better. You're going to get better fast. If there's anything the presidency of Donald Trump has revealed is that liberals and I guess center-right Republicans put a real high price on civility in politics. They put a real high price on carrying out the work of president, whatever that is, even if it's bad, with dignity. And no one has capitalized on that more in terms of making it a money-making scheme than the Lincoln Project. Now, the Lincoln Project has capitalized on this climate, on this hunger for a time where American politics was civil, where you could carry out awful foreign policy with a smile on your face and make everyone proud to be American. And it's not surprising this Republican organization is run by a bunch of neoconservatives who were involved in John McCain's 2008 campaign and also the presidency of George Bush Jr. So in this video, we're going to explain how the Lincoln Project has taken liberals and blue MAGA for a ride, has pocketed a lot of money from making these quite effective ads, as you've probably seen before the video begun, but it's all surface level. And these ads don't actually change anything in terms of people's opinions based on polling data. But before we get any further into the video, if you want to support my content, please like the video, maybe share. Also check out my Patreon in the description. Any amount anyone can give me is greatly appreciated. Also in the description, check out all my social medias and my podcast. So to keep things timely, Georgia is about to have a runoff election for the Senate. It could really shape the balance of power in the Senate for the next presidential term. Very, very important. Lots of Democrats are going down to campaign to make sure a Democrat fills the seat. So the Lincoln Project are capitalizing on this as well. And I'm going to show you what the fundamental problem with them is through what they're doing to achieve a democratic victory in this race. So Lincoln Project tweeting, is Georgia on your mind? It's on ours too. Donate here and help fund our fight to take power away from Mitch McConnell. Click on the link, it has the Lincoln Project. Help us defeat Trump and Trumpism. We need the support of patriots and partners like you to hold accountable those whom have violated their constitutional oath and put their own ambition ahead of the greater good of the American people. The survival of the nation in the face of the crimes, corruption and corrosive nature of Donald Trump's are a higher calling than mere politics. As Americans, we must stem the damage he and his followers are doing to the rule of law, the constitution and the American character. Tens of thousands of patriots and partners like you are contributing to help us hold them accountable, will you? Then there's a big donation button there. So essentially, you're not going to be donating to local initiatives to help people get out and vote. You're not going to be contributing to local campaigns run by the people actually running to fill the seat. You're going to be giving the Lincoln Project a bunch of money to make its YouTube ads, which I said before, don't actually work based on polling data. And it is a smart strategy. What they're doing is essentially taking elements from, I guess, leftist and liberals attacks on people like Donald Trump and effectively making it into videos and saying to people, look, we are good Republicans. You know, whether you're blue or red, if you're like us, we care about the Constitution. We care about America. We need to get Trump out of office because he's just totally unfit. He's totally corrupt. And we, we hate that. We hate that in a Republican president. Not to mention most of us love Ronald Reagan, who was insanely guilty for Iran-Contra and would have been prosecuted if his Alzheimer's wasn't so bad. But regardless, they're taking the optics of leftist liberal criticism of Donald Trump and saying it's a Republican criticism as well. Now, I'm going to get into the two most prominent people in this project, but if I had to speculate why they don't like Donald Trump, it's because he's shattering the neoconservative dream. Of course, neoconservatism aims to work with global partners to spread American democracy. George Bush is the best example of this when he wrote up his list and his administration wrote up the list of all the 
dictatorships and rogue states, they should topple and make into American style democracies. He had for places like Iran, North Korea, Iraq, and that is the neoconservative dream in a nutshell. And to do that, undermining military alliances and undermining NATO is probably not a very good thing. Something Donald Trump has done with NATO and also other places like South Korea. If you want to spread American democracy and free market capitalism around the world to make the American empire stronger, you can't be going around not backing up your allies who help prop up this empire. So let's get into the two most prominent people. There's a bunch of awful people involved, but Rick Wilson, he is the most prominent. So just his Wikipedia bio, I know it's pretty simple, but you'll see how awful he is. And then we'll get into his previous tweet. So Wilson entered the political arena by campaigning for Connie Mack during the 1988 Florida Senate election. Later, he served on George H. W. Bush's campaign as Florida field director. So again, playing into my belief that these guys don't care about criminality since George H.W. Bush pardoned everyone involved in Iran-Contra. Wilson was also a presidential appointee to the Department of Defense under then Secretary of Defense Dick Cheney. So lovely company this guy is keeping. In 1994, Wilson joined the Florida media firm where he created poly award-winning ads for Rudy Giuliani during the 1997 New York mayoral election. So this guy helped get Giuliani elected, who was one of Trump's top cronies. In 1999, Wilson moved to New York City, where he initially worked at City Hall and then later campaigned for Giuliani during the 2000 New York Senate election. And he didn't leave the Republican Party till 2016. So this is a pretty old dude, and I don't feel like his politics have evolved. I just think he hates Donald Trump and what he does. So let's read some of his old tweets. So 2009, given his upcoming meeting with the Holy Father, I'm, I guess this means the Pope, will Obama praise the Catholic faith the way he gushes over for Islam. So the next one in 2016, Obama hears the word goat fried dog and clears his lunch schedule. Again, awful, awful racism there. So um, let me get this right. We're expected to constantly apologize for slavery, racism, American Indians and disco. Muslims, nothing. Again, doesn't this guy seem so great? Shouldn't all the liberal celebrities like Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill be doing ads for the Lincoln Project? Tomorrow, you can fire only one of them. The choice is yours. Shouldn't you be giving this guy a ton of money, maybe millions and millions of dollars from traditional Democratic voters to help a neoconservative super PAC? So here's another funny one. George Conway is also one of the top guys on the team. He's actually married to Kellyanne Conway, which is just so, so strange, where she is Trump's mouthpiece and has been for nearly the whole of his administration. But here is a guy running a super PAC dedicated to getting rid of Trump. So let's get into Conway's background as well to let you know who we're dealing with. So Conway has a background as a lawyer since the 1980s. So Conway was one of the attorneys who represented Paula Jones in her lawsuit against US President Bill Clinton. During the representation of Jones, he worked closely with Ann Coulter and Matt Drudge of the Drudge Report. Again, showing you the type of people these guys have always been involved with, literally some of the most awful Republican people who have poisoned the discourse in America, who have helped brainwash millions of Republican voters into a mold which then was exploited by Trump to create his legions of fans. And here's another funny thing. In the late 1990s, Conway dated conservative pundit Laura Ingram, again, one of Trump's top cheerleaders. So there's two of the more prominent guys. You also have Steve Schmidt, who worked on John McCain's 2008 campaign. So let's just keep it clear who we're dealing with, despite the ads, despite a celebrity endorsement, despite, you know, they might be funny, that Regeneron one was pretty funny. They clearly have a good social media team, but the goals of these people is just to remove Trump and replace him with a standard neocon from back in the early 2000s. And them liking Joe Biden should tell you a lot about Joe Biden. He's always been this bipartisan guy. He's worked with the most awful senators in modern US history. Joe Biden is not a good guy. Joe Biden is not a good politician. Joe Biden has not supported anything moral for his whole life. In fact, him and a lot of the centrist Democrats like Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, they've just enabled neoconservatives and they've just enabled their agenda. That's why the Lincoln Project like Joe Biden. So here comes the really sad, but pretty funny bit. They've raised a bunch of money. Did it work? Did their ads work? Did they change Republican minds like they planned to? So Refinery29 reporting. After raising $64.7 million according to the FEC data, and with no proof these funds did anything to move the election needle, the PAC seems intent to demonstrate that Trumpism is not a flaw in the Republican Party, but it's ethos. They certainly didn't care about actually changing Republican voters' minds, or if they did, they just weren't very good at it. 
Exit polls have shown that 58% of white men and 55% of white women voted for Trump in the 2020 election, a reported 93% of Republicans and 40% of independents also voted for four more years of Trump, all of whom are the Lincoln Project's so-called target audience. David Sorota, who helped run Bernie Sanders' campaign and wrote a lot of his speeches on the campaign trail, wrote a good article for The Jacobin where he talks about this stuff. So I'm just gonna read a bit of his take, which is helpful in getting a bit of insight into this. So the GOP operatives are reportedly positioned to go from light lighting liberals' money on fire during the 2020 election to now using liberals' money to launch a media empire that could push a new Biden administration to the right. So that's an interesting point in the terms that they're trying to make a new alternative, I guess, to OANN and Fox News and other stuff like that. So in all, Trump had support from 91% of Republicans and voters who lean Republican, according to a Fox News voter analysis that surveyed 109,000 people nationwide just before the election. Although Biden outperformed 2016 nominee Hillary Clinton in suburban areas, Trump won a higher percentage of white women in 2020. So again, all that money they raised, all that funding, all the money they spent on these ads pretty much did nothing with their target demographic. Of course, it made liberals think, aren't some Republicans nice? We're all in this together to fight for democracy, to get rid of Trump. But a lot of people were skeptical beforehand, particularly with the people actually running this organization. So it seems like, you know, the new Georgia initiative they're running, where they want more money to make more ads to target this specific runoff election, it seems just a scam to help build up their support, build up the money, basically taking money from the people who traditionally be their opponents and making, like David Sorota outlined, a new media empire. Thankfully, not all Democrats and not all Democratic politicians are that stupid. They realise what this is. So Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who is probably one of the best politicians in Congress, along with the rest of the squad, tweeted out a chain where she basically criticised the Lincoln Project, so I'm going to read that for you now. So quote tweeting Benjamin Dixon, who appears in The Young Turks, The Lincoln Project got 67 million to do literally nothing, and the black organisers that helped Biden win probably are short on rent this month. Then AOC said it's not too late for them to do the right thing. Lincoln Project should take their L and publicly pledge to give a lot of their fundraising to the people who actually made a big difference. And if they spent it all, yikes, then they should consider using fundraising juggernaut to get resources to those organisations. There's potential incentive because Project Lincoln is deaf in scam territory with these results. It's a pretty bad rep, even though the GOP is a thing for failing up. Come clean, say, listen, we thought it'd work, it didn't, and in good faith, we will raise X million for these people who deserve it. And for folks who think it persuaded Republicans, I'd be interested to see data on how effective their videos and NYC billboards were at persuasion, especially data that justifies 67 million. By the way, I'm definitely happy to be proven wrong if we can get independent data that the videos and billboards were directly responsible for effective Republican to Democratic persuasion, 67 million of it, I'll publicly apologize, but we just haven't seen any. And in the comments of those tweets, she's getting a load of hate from liberals and blue MAGA who are saying that the Lincoln Project did more than her. They helped and just because they didn't like Bernie Sanders or something, that's why AOC hates them. But thankfully there are rational people who can see that neoconservatives attacking Trump from the left aren't actually left wing, aren't actually liberal, they're just concerned about their faction of the Republican Party. Again, Steve Smith, Rick Wilson, George Conway. I read you their bios. I read you their careers. Who have they mixed with their entire political career? They just hate politicians associated with the Tea Party. They just hate politicians associated with Donald Trump. Yeah, they might not like the corruption, the outward corruption. They might not like how crass Trump is. They might not like the way he's obsessed with himself and the media, how he doesn't take the job seriously. I get that. A lot of people hate that as well. But again, they also don't like he doesn't pursue a neocon agenda, which fits in with their worldview the same way both Bush administrations did. Because again, if they cared about criminality, why are they only leaving the Republican Party in 2016? Rick Wilson worked on H.W. Bush's campaign. And like I said, last day of office for H.W., he pardoned everyone involved in Iran-Contra. And the only reason Ronald Reagan wasn't prosecuted for his role in Iran-Contra is because his Alzheimer's was so bad, when the special prosecutor actually met him, he realised Ronald Reagan wouldn't be able to tell him anything because he didn't know anything anymore. Then you have stuff like illegal wars in Iraq, 
George Bush really ramping up this drone program. Again, these guys don't care about criminality. They don't care about corruption. All they care about is their side winning. They're just very, very good at the optics and their ads are effective for a certain crowd. They're not effective for the people they claim to be targeting to switch their vote from Republican to Democrat. And again, probably shows that in the Republican Party, there has been a great shift from neoconservatism to Trumpism, which is just not going away anytime soon. So you can like the Lincoln Project videos and think the person who made them is skilled and knows what they're talking about, but it totally failed at what it was trying to do. And they're just taking your money and lighting it on fire because it hasn't helped anything. That 67 million could be spent so much better. So it just feels like these neoconservatives are using the Trump administration's dying breath as a launching point for their new media empire, as David Sorota put it. Anyway, please like the video, maybe share if you've seen people sharing these Lincoln Project videos and thinking they're actually on your side. If you want to find me on social media, at The Cavernacle, mainly on Twitter, but also on Instagram. If you want to check out my Reddit, r slash The Cavernacle, for my subreddit, u slash Tommy Cahill, 1995. I'm also on Discord now. It's an unofficial Discord. I'm not running it, even though people have asked my permission to make it. So the unofficial Cavernacle Discord, I'm going to put the link in the description as well. So please Please come join that if you want a bit more of a community. Same with the subreddit as well, actually. I'm also on TikTok now, Cavernacle TikTok. And finally, if you want to contribute anything to this channel, my Patreon is in the description. Hopefully this video isn't demonetized, but it probably will be because most of my content is. But I also appreciate everyone so far who has given me any amount of money. So if you made it this far, thank you for watching.